Welcome to the Wargaming.net League North America World of Tanks Season 1 Finals live from Treasure Island in Las Vegas. I am Joshua Gray, joined by the very beautiful Lauren Elise. Lauren, we saw some incredible tank warfare yesterday, but it's not over yet. It is not over yet. In fact, today we're going to go through the best of the best. We're going to weed them out all the way down to number one. Whoever's going to take it to the, I guess this is it. This is like the big grand shebang. This is the shebang. The $100,000 oh prize pool gosh. is on the line. And our four remaining teams are Wreak Havoc, Simp, Simple Tankers, and Fulcrum Gaming. The games are going to be intense. The players are ready. So everyone watching around the world and everyone here live in Las Vegas, are you ready? Yeah, I think they're ready, guys. So from here, what do we do? Let's battle! Thank you very much, Clutch and Lauren, and welcome back to the desk once again to the WGLNA Season 1 Finals live in Las Vegas. My name is Dan Brodan Cho. I am Andre Greator Pangshua. So happy to be here again in day number two here live in Treasure Island. We have a great show for you to guys. Show for you to guys. Show for you today, guys. Uh, we have our last uh, four teams battling it out for that $100,000 prize pool. That's right. Let's look at the bracket to see an update of what's happened thus far. We had Fulcrum versus the Cunninghams, where Fulcrum was able to sweep the Cunninghams in a pretty one-sided series. They've been looking very strong. They'll be facing up against another team who swept their opponents, Simple Tankers, who unexpectedly took out Nerve 4-0 as well. However, on the other side of the bracket, we have Reek Havoc and Simp, who both had a highly contested series and barely managed to escape with wins. And even though Simp won 4-2, River of Blood gave them an, an incredible run for their money. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, one day, I really feel like River of Blood isn't a top eight team. And we were actually talking about this in breakfast uh, this morning. We were saying, man, River of Blood just was playing so, so fantastically. Such a, a, a drastic paradigm shift from, I would say, the group stages till now. So it's really, really great to see such a premier team rise up in the NAA scene. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the matches for today. That's right. Well, we can expect the first match will be the first semifinal between Fulcrum and Simple Tankers. Following that will be the other semifinal between Simp Main and, uh, and Wreak Havoc. <laughs> I was waiting for the graphic to pop up. And then we have the third and fourth place match. I apologize there. Uh, so after that, we're going to have a fun little race for you guys. It's going to be a fun presentation brought to you by Mr. Bitter in Rotterdam. And then we have our grand final to finalize everything and find out who gets the $50,000 grand prize. And it's going to be a really fun day of games, Andre. But we do also realize that I've seen some new faces here in the crowd as well as probably some new people on the stream. So once again, we want to explain the 742 format for those people who may not be familiar with competitive World of Tanks. Rukil, you're the third member of our team. Why don't you go ahead and explain it once more for everybody? Hey, guys. I would love to explain that the 742 format is seven tanks per team with 42 points allotted to each team. The highest tier is eight, and every tank is equal to points, uh, equal to its tier. So pay attention to that. We'll see a lot of tier ones. Each match is a best of seven, and each battle will be 10 minutes long. At the end of every single battle, if it comes to a draw, we'll reference our eight point rule to see if there is a victor. If there's a difference of eight points at the end of the match between both teams, we will have someone declare the victor. Excellent. Uh, eloquently put, Randall. And again, if you guys have any questions, comments, or even just statements you want to make, even, even a funny picture as well, via Twitter or Facebook, go to everything at WGLNA and let us know. And we may put some of your comments or favorite uh, submissions onto the ticker throughout the broadcast. Why don't you do that as we get ready for a quick commercial break? Andre, what can we really expect in the upcoming seconds? Uh, well, I do want to keep you guys in mind that a random person will be drawn today to re receive a free X51 uh, computer from Alienware. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Make sure you're in the building because you have to be in the building to win it. It's going to be at the finals that we will do the drawing. But uh, why don't you go ahead and look at what this beautiful system has to offer. Back to the desk once again here at the WGLNA Season 1 Finals. Our first match of the day will be Fulcrum versus Simple Tankers. And here to bring to you our pre-match ceremonies is the talented and delectable Lauren Elise. Thank you, Dan. Here we go, a highly anticipated match. To my right, we have the Simple Tankers, and to my left, we have Fulcrum Gaming. The team captains are going to join me right now in a very quick face-off. 
very quickly. I know that we've all been waiting for this since yesterday. Some of us have been waiting all season to see this happen. How are you feeling? Come, come in. Come on. I don't bite hard. So how do you feel? I know yesterday that you guys had, you had all this super confidence and you're here now against Fulcrum Gaming. The Relic yesterday told you you were going to be here, so you saw it coming. How do you feel? Feeling pretty good. Uh, still uh, think that Fulcrum's uh, people to beat, so... Always uh, got the nerves going, but I think we're going to do good. Good. What about you? How do you feel? You look confident. Oh, we're feeling very good. We're very prepared for this, and uh, I, I think we stand a good chance. Do you have any words that you would like to say to Nagatron over here? I want to know if that uh, beard bed is still on and if we can uh, up it to if uh, I kill him, uh, I shave his face, and we videotape it, and uh, opposite, he kills me, and... Uh, he shaves my face. What do you say? I think he just wants to touch my face. <laughs> well, you know what? I have a razor right here. So it's going to get really, real, really quick. Okay? Now, before this happens, you have to say yes or no. <laughs> yes. All right. We've heard it. The bet is on. So... Without any further ado, as the higher seat, I have the coin. You get to pick heads or tails. If you win, you get to choose the map. Or you can defer it, and he can choose the map. The opposite person that chooses the map gets to choose the spawning point. Good? There we go. Heads or tails? I guess that's tails. It's a dollar coin. I'm not used to that. <laughs> tails! You said heads, right? Okay. Do you? <laughs> he deferred. So what's the map going to be? Ents. And the spawning point? South. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. Please take your seats. You have three minutes to pick your tanks. Good luck. Have fun. Let's battle. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Nagatron and Junior. Great showman, as always. For those of you that don't know, in the group stages, they already made this bet where whoever kills the other person will have to shave uh, their respective beard. But what happened was Junior was one shot away from killing him, and then someone stole the kill. So it was so, so close to seeing a very, very clean-shaven Nagatron over here in the uh, WGLNA finals. Who knows, it might be the source of his power and the Nagatron <laughs> is incapable of holding a keyboard and mouse any longer. But we'll find out that after the match because we have a lot to talk about with these two teams. Let's start off with a discussion once again with Fulcrum. Randall, I'm gonna toss it to you immediately. How did Fulcrum look yesterday and what is your expectation coming into day number two? Fulcrum looked fantastic yesterday and they pretty much decimated their opponents. I think we can all agree on that, right guys? Yes. Yeah. So I feel like today, if they can keep it up, uh, they should do pretty well. Although Simple Tankers is an opponent which surprised us yesterday and I thought did rather well considering our expectations. Who would you pin as the key, the keystones of Simple Tankers to really uh, make them be able to complete this upset? Who needs to perform uh, a little bit better than average than what they're normally used to on Simple Tankers from your experience because they are from the Simp Clan? I, I don't think you can say any individual player needs to perform that much better. Every player is going to need to be on top of their game this entire time. From any T1 player to the, the regular tier A players, it's going to be everyone on the top of their game to beat Fulcrum. Keeping this screen up real quick, I can tell you right now, Absolute Royal, statistically the best heavy tanker in the WGL. The second highest damage dealing on average per game player is Hugo Maximus, again, one of the best heavy tankers. Nagatron, Soviet, both very, very capable medium and heavy tankers. When I was talking about simple tankers yesterday, I was saying their big advantage is their heavy tankers against nerves light tankers. This is a lineup right here from Fulcrum Gaming that just outpowers the entire lineup of simple tankers in all statistical respects. 
I completely agree, but Simple Tankers also has a pretty strong lineup as well, headed by Junior and his co-captain Pub Whisper. They have pretty solid lineup overall with Z Slayer, Mornblade, Zakume, and Darius, and Jay Smooth, who we all had to see at the All-Star game as well. Ruth mm -hmm. Ventarho and Kiel Panic, all of these guys are more than capable of playing extremely well. And keep in mind, they're also from Simp as well. So uh, there still is that kind of a simp Volcom rivalry going on, at least at its very root. Definitely, and, and with Simp, obviously, Simp Main, I should say, being such a premier team, uh, we can assume that they've talked a lot. And with Simp and Fulcrum always playing, I know they've been uh, kind of like team buddies, uh, a little bit training buddies a lot for the international scene. Simp Main has a ton of information to tell Simple Tankers. This is going to be really, really special here in the round of four. That's right. Uh, so, Randa, what are your thoughts on Simple Tankers? You talked a little bit about how they surprised you, and we talked that everyone has to perform well. How do you rate their chances up against Fulcrum when you look at the big picture? When we look at the big picture, you, obviously Fulcrum is favored to win. They, they perform so incredibly well all the time. It's, uh, I'd, if, if I were to just guess what the end score would be, and I guess this may be probably the best way to put it, uh, maybe 4-2. Maybe four, four I'd give two, uh, just normal expectation out of Simple Tankers. If they do better, that will prove to me that they're improving and they're doing a very good job at that. If they don't, uh, it's just too bad. I'm going to keep it your way, Rano, and also ask, do you have any insight specifically onto what Simple Tankers or Fulcrum uh, could be planning here on ends? Uh, I did ask, if I've been talking to a few teams here and there. Uh, mostly, changes are coming out on more open maps. I'm hearing more things about whether or not teams are wanting a Pershing, some teams wanting to play a WZ-132. Uh, maps like Ents, though, it's, it's probably going to be the same as we've been seeing for a while, just getting better and better at that slow play, that west side, or maybe opposite side, trying to figure out how to cross the tracks. All right, well, we'll see what's going to happen, because the countdown has begun for Anx. Battle number one between Fulcrum and Simple Tankers. Who's going to start it and take it? The answers begin now. Let's introduce our teams as well as the tanks in the north side. The blue team, the underdog. Give a round of applause for the Simple Tankers. Oh, and very quickly they're responding to the red team. Give it up for Fulcrum Gaming. These teams aren't skipping a beat, Andre, immediately. We saw F0X being taken out, and Simple Tankers responding very quickly to that F block push. Yep, I think a lot of stagnation will happen there, but obviously, Nagatron and the rest of Vulcan Gaming were trying to get a jump onto this block. You have to do it incredibly fast to be there before your opponents. Uh, because they haven't really passed these windows or these buildings over here, it's going to be incredibly hard to actually squeeze through these tight little corridors and then be able to get your whole team to engage properly. I think Fulcrum needs to back up from here. They can't really push any further. We do have a couple spots from both teams. Akume did manage to see uh, a couple members there from uh, for Fulcrum. Randall, what is your take on this position? Because normally we see Fulcrum be able to set up really strong on the south side, but Simple Tankers was there to beat them to the punch. Yeah, I like the position out of Simple Tankers right now. They're doing uh, something, it's pretty normal. I mean, this isn't inventive or, or out of the box or anything, but I feel like it's, it's a strong play. It's always been a strong play for Ents. They can return to their base in time. They can attack. And I feel like uh, Simple Tankers is getting ready for an attack. This is, once they realize where Nagatron is, and if Nagatron is out of position for half a second, we could see four tanks from Simple Tankers just push forward and maybe overmatch. Oh, ooh, nice damage ooh. actually coming out here because yes. this is where some slow play early damage could get traded. And uh, if they if Simple Tankers gets a lead here with uh, damage, they could beat Fulcrum in the fight. Although a big push from Fulcrum will probably push the tide in their favor. Uh, Ruth and Carlisle taking big shots from three members of Fulcrum while Sylvie and Absolute trying to push up the one line and get a Contra flank. It's going to be really tough to see if they can finish off any of the members, and Dares and Ruthven both within, uh, on the last last lines, but Pub Whisper also drops as well. This is exactly what Fulcrum wanted to take advantage of the one heavy that was over by the railroad tracks and not being able to get into the fight. 
Takumi is going to take out that last 5100, but man, oh man, are there a lot of simple tankers dead on the field right now. At the same time, it's not like Fulcrum went unscathed. They lost both their T1s. Hugo also taking a big shot and is now within two, uh, two penetrations from death. Zukume Ooh. lines up a shot, but is not able to get it and will back off. No, that was Hugo Maximus missing oh, a shot. Miss that? Yeah, and Zukume is now going to land his second shot here. The third shot might be able to clean him up. Is he going to take any penetration damage? Oh, yes, no. he will. But Zukume, oh, gets tracked from behind. He's going to use the repair kit, going to keep going forward. And can he get it? Hugo Megatron Maximus. needs to come up big if he wants to save his teammate. Hugo oh. does manage to get another shot. And Zukume now Sobe is coming in. And down he's going to go. Uh, one for one. Nagatron down to 40 hit points. But Soviet is going to screen for him right now. Jay Smooth is going to start engaging against this 5100 oh. by Soviet. Down to 432 health points. How Jay much ammo does he have? Does he have another shot? I don't think so. Yes, Soviet's going to take him out. But and Soviet is able to finish it off, Take but at the same the time, points. there's a oh, cap. Cap points. It's up to 91%. Can anybody get there in time? Three I seconds don't know. left. Megatron does oh, have a shot. Yes, he was. It's a red face capture. Battle number one goes to the simple tankers, as during the entire exchange, they were able to get to the red base. Battle number one goes simple tankers. We're going to take a quick break and we come back, talk a little bit about what happened. Got to be. He nice three. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, everybody. To <laughs> Clutch out of yeah from the backstage. Welcome back, everybody, to the desk where Simple Tankers is currently up 1 0 over Fulcrum after they did lose the Brawl next, was, but it was able to employ their two T1 Cunninghams for a fast cap during the entire brawl. It was absolutely stunning to see this happen yet again, and to Fulcrum nonetheless. Yeah, and Junior was in the middle of the battle. He actually took out Relics, big surprise, and then went over to cap out. Remember, they lost a T1 very, very early in the beginning stages, Fulcrum that is. So it's two T1s against zero T1s. They're just utilizing the strength of having those T1s out. If you want to shoot a T1, that's one of those valuable shells from a tier eight tank. You don't really want to be doing that and they got punished. Well, we have a few seconds, Randall, before the next map on steps. Do you have any thoughts about what we just saw? I, uh, I was incredibly impressed by the play from Soviet. I'm actually gonna pull up on my screen real quick, just to show everybody out here how well he did. Ah, it's too late, battle started. He hit 11 out of 11 hits last time. That is 100%. Four kills 100%. over Tankers. 2K damage. Exactly, fantastic play out of Soviet, guys. Well, Soviet will have to come up big, but so will other people of Fulcrum. Their T1s need to stay alive if they want to take it into game three with an even series. Let's get into battle number two on steps between Fulcrum and Simple Tanker. South side on steps. We have the blue team currently up 1-0. Give it up for Simple Tankers. <laughs> the red team in the north heading over towards the east side on steps. They are the heavy favorites, but they are down 0-1. Give it up for Fulcrum Gaming. <laughs> so by the way, that's the first map that Fulcrum lost so far in the round of eight. Of course, they went 4-0 yesterday against their opponents, and now over here, right away, game number one. Fulcrum wanted to be a little bit more aggressive, but they got punished pretty hard. How did they play it out over here on steps, though? Now, Junior is leading everything all the way over to the west side. We've seen him do this many of times, especially in the all-star match, where we almost won if it wasn't for a kill. I'm sorry I couldn't carry that hard, sir. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Normally when you do something like this, you're trying to just uh, take tempo control, which is basically you're doing an action to force a lot of reactions. And whenever you force reactions and you give them a small amount of time, it incurs mistakes more often. Well, we'll see if that ends up coming into play here, Andreas. 
The tank compositions are pretty similar, other than that WZ-132. Oh, just kidding. The two Pershings. <laughs> I was looking at the T-69s here from, uh, from Fulcrum, but, and I kind of I got a glimpse. But the Pershing and T-69, very similar in model, but def definitely very different in how they function on the battlefield. Rando, can you talk a little bit about the double Pershing choice here on steps? It's a consistent fire choice, and it shows that, uh, that Simple Tankers is leaning more towards a consistent fire as opposed to a autoloader setup and they feel like that they can engage their enemies at distance and pick them and just kind of pick them apart until the real big close engagement can happen that's uh that's probably their ideal engagement or the ideal way this map will go for them as opposed to you know what we'll see for fulcrum is they want to just burst down their enemies catch someone out completely destroy them with autoloaders back off because there's no way you can engage if you're simple tankers after losing a whole tier eight and then just reload and re-engage again. Absolutely, the Pershing DPM does have higher count than the T-69, but it's about how fast you can be able to get out those four shots with the T-69 is what's so important. And usually when you have people like Hugo Max, who's an absolute royal, who are absolutely nasty T-69 drivers, it's an incredibly scary thing to go up against, especially on a map like Steps. Now, Fulcrum is picking the north side of Steps. We normally we see them go for a south side push, and similar to what Simple Tankers are doing. But they are very spread out, and they have good crossfire opportunities. While separate tankers, they're making a very aggressive push, only leaving one T1 back in case to spot any enemies. And we actually have blind shots fired from Pub Whisperer over here. He is firing into the, the northeast, looking for those hidden T1 tanks. He is trying to find them. He, I, I guess someone must have been spotted, because he is just firing off into those bushes repeatedly. He's put out maybe 10, 10 shots, just, just looking for that hidden T1 and he doesn't seem to have found it. I'm wondering where that Fulcrum T1 is, if he's even there. Yeah, definitely a little bit interesting. Now, I, I want to bring something up real quick. We have the, the lineup for two Amex 1390s. We've seen and talked to Fulcrum a lot about this, and they value the 1390s over the WZ-132s like crazy. They just do not like the WZ-132s. Rootkill, I'm going to defer this to you. I mean, what, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses of having either or? Well, both the WZ-132 and the 1390 have poor gun depression. So right there, you've just got poor uh, hill play tanks. Now, the thing about the 1390 is autoloader, and it's an in inaccurate autoloader. That's the weakness. It's an autoloader that's great for damage, but you have to get close or you have to stop uh, to fire. And that, that can be a weakness, and that might be why some people choose the 132, because the 132 can actually be incredibly accurate on the move, mounting the 85 millimeter can now the 100 is decently accurate too but the 85 uh, which is actually what we see on junior right now that's the 85 the little muzzle brake there uh it's it's a great little tank it moves very quickly has great view range actually uh, i think it might have better camo than 1390 uh it's it's a great tank and i i really don't understand why people don't like the 132 i think it might just be a personal preference especially with yeah. the, the the amount of time the 132 has been in the game as opposed to the 1390 1390 has been in here for a very long time now it's a veteran tank the, the 132 is relatively new, and not a lot of people quite get the tank yet. Gotcha. Well, thank you for that great explanation, as we do have a nice shot of Junior moving and trying to utilize his mobility on that 132. The Simple Tanker sees that they're constantly getting spotted, and Relix is just perched there in a nice spot over there uh, in the middle of the map along the middle side of the road. And now Simple Tanker is going to initiate a cap along with Fulcrum. Who can be able to get the resets? Who be able to rack up points quicker? We're about to find out in the upcoming seconds, as one uh, members from both teams are now returning to base. That's right, Hugo Maximus is spotted out along with Nagatron in that 1390. And 14 seconds left, 20 seconds left. Oh, red base is going to be reset, so there needs to be a very, very fast reset. Eight seconds left. Can he get over there? I don't think so. There's just a single T1 all the way over on the other side. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, just wow, a very Fulcrum is going to go for win. a very easy cap on battle number two. And that's it. So the series is tied. And now it's set, reset to a best of five. Let's take a quick break. And we come back, battle number three. south side the blue team currently charging a little bit more eastern side at least they're stacking that way the blue team it is simple tankers <laughs> and the red team in the north spreading more towards the western side but still sending absolute to scout the delta village 
They are the heavy favorites, the number one seed in all of WGL. Give it up for Fulcrum Gaming. Some interesting stuff, just going straight up the, the six line right here. And this is gonna surprise a lot of the stuff that's going on. Of course, we do see that split as you were talking about. Some tanks going into the east, some tanks going into the west, west from Fulcrum. You can see Fulcrum is kind of trying to mind game their opponents, but for the most part, uh, I do feel like that this is pretty nice position, I would actually say, for simple tankers. I know that sounds like kind of crazy because you are pretty nicely uh, defended over on the west side, but just the fact that you have that center control, I really feel like that is one of the most important things in World of Tanks. Randall, what do you think about this stack here from Simple Tankers, now that we ha heard a little bit of Gretorp's thoughts? Uh, I, I would have preferred a wider spread, maybe putting another tank further to the east, uh, just, just to kind of maybe get a potential for crossfire, or, or the potential to maneuver against more, a, a larger variance of strategies from Fulcrum. Uh, there was actually something I wanted to talk about, which was at the beginning, both scouts went, uh, went for a nice mid run, but Junior had to back down because from the south, you have that terrible jump towards the Delta Village, but from the north, great jump. And Junior was not able to see anything from Fulcrum during this, but it doesn't look like they care because their strat is just going to go straight up the middle no yeah. matter what Fulcrum does. And they see relics. They're probably going to stop by and take care of him promptly as uh, they don't, they don't want to spend ammo they don't have to use, but he will finally drop. Now, we do still have another light tank over into the A row that's going to be pushed up by another light tank from Simple Tankers. And now we have almost all of Fulcrum RTB, except one of the T1s are going to counter cap. So they're going to put on the pressure and hopefully they can uh, withstand any kind of attack here from Simple Tankers. Wow, look at this beautiful screen. Now, 150, 100 is going to go down. But the second T1, uh, Mornblade, wasn't there in time. So we can see 15, 21 seconds okay. left of content constant um you know reset and cap but here we go one of the no he gets shut down i'm sorry absolute royal in his that's 13 being tough pub whisper really coming in huge being able to take that uh, taking down absolute royal one of the highest performers on fulcrum friction trying to wrap around getting a shot on uh, maybe one of those t1s he needs to get the shot but here comes pub whisper for a screen it's going to distract him but it doesn't matter because one of the t1s does end up dropping oh no and Darius, he has all the cap points and it looks like he's gonna uh, go down. He's barely, yes, he does. Oh no! A disastrous series of events for Simple Tankers, and now all of a sudden, Fulcrum is the one putting counter cap pressure, and it's gonna be very tough for Simple Tankers to do anything. In fact, they just simply might lose based off elimination. As Takume, the only IS3 left for Simple Tankers, is about to drop. Fulcrum able to deal with this attack perfectly from the middle, and it's now going to be able to take a 2-1 series lead as soon as the last member of Simple Tankers drops. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Fulcrum Gaming going to go up 2-1 in this best of seven series. We're going to come back. Battle number four. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the WGL. Let's go ahead and get introductions on the way. In the north side, the blue team currently down 1-2. They took first blood, but they'll have to come back. Give it up for Simple Tankers. <laughs> and in the south, in the red, currently spreading out, they managed to take battles two and three. Give a round of applause for Fulcrum Gaming. And right away, we can see the effects of game number three pushing straight through the center. This, this is a statement that's being made for the future games in this series. It says, be careful because I can easily do something that is so audacious. If you try to do metagame play and if you try to do mind games, let's say hill games, I'm going to take advantage of you. That being said, on Himmelsdorf, they're saying, well, if they do the same thing over here, and if we take the hill, not going to be a great decision. So let's spread out, play very defensive. Because of this, there's going to be a lot of sight to be had from Simple Tankers. They're going to get up here and see everything that's going on. On top of that, they will be able to get uh, a potentially a T1 kill. Ooh, Relics does spot one of the heavies. I believe that's Pub Whisperer. And that's going to be a little bit tougher 
for Simple Tankers to execute the strategy properly because, well, at least now Relics has some information as to where one of their opponents are. Very good job again by Relics to back off from that point. Fulcum is going to band together and make a west side train push while Simple Tankers are now starting to split up in terms of their retreat as well as their advance. They were able to see that though all the way from the high ground, I believe. Uh, they spotted all the way to the west hand side to see, okay, there is a tank that is pushing all the way up. I have to be very careful so you can see a big retreat from all the tier eight tanks of simple tankers, and they're gonna defend cap. Yeah, that, was, uh, that was friction getting spotted out, and uh, it, that was all the way in about, that's a cross in F3. And it's just far enough from the hill that you can actually get that spotting. So uh, just, I think that was lucky positioning and not deliberate by simple tankers. Very lucky for them, and they will be able to react to this properly and they are getting set up for that quick cap, and it looks like they're just right, they're just so close to each other. A fight mm -hmm. might start here in just a moment. A serendipitous moment for Simple Tankers, but they'll take it nonetheless. Anything that can tilt the advantage in their favor will be very good, it will be very prevalent for how they will end up in this skirmish and fight that's coming up in just a couple of seconds. Friction, Hugo Maximus pushing further down the D row. Will they be able to get into a good position in time. They might be able to encounter one of the members from Simple Tankers who might be a little bit too far out the cap, but they will be able to get a good proxy spot very oh. soon as Pub Whisper has been spotted, and very soon so will some other tanks as Ruthven has now also been lit up. Oh gosh, Ruthven Carlisle is gonna be jumped here, but there are a lot of tanks that are actually circling around trying to get a good flank. You can see J Smooth and Takumi and an IS-3 and a T-69 now gonna circle around, try to get a good flank on both Friction and Hugo Maximus. There is a fast cap. Ooh. All right, Potentially Sukume. Starting? No, not yet. Sukume's gonna aim for F0X, oh, nice. and now gonna immediately relieve some of the cap pressure immediately. And now Fulcrum Gaming has to be very hesitant because they know someone's behind them. Oh. Junior's gonna charge the front and tries to even get out as many shots as possible before he drops. Ruthven hasn't been able to do much just yet just because of the, all of the pressure that's been pushed on him. Meanwhile, Pub Whisper also trying to lay down shots, but Simple Tankers is now going for the flanks. Sukume and Jay Smooth trying to bring up the rear. Yeah, really nicely done. Takume actually getting blown up for a little bit. Absolutely Royal Soviet and Nagatron are over there. Down he goes. Jay Smith is going to try to clean things up, but he's getting surrounded now by all five tier eight tanks. Nagatron down to 139 hit points. Oh, we can get out here, Retor. Oh, this isn't looking good. Jay Smith, but a lot of people are clipping. Just one more shot from an IS-3 will be able to kill Jay Smooth. Down he goes, and Ruth and Carlisle is now alone. Where is Pub Whisper? I think he's around. Yeah, he's clipping. And, and, and Ruth and tried wrapping around to finish off Nagatron, but the damage is too spread. Four members alive of tier eight tanks for Fulcrum Gaming, and despite the counter cap pressure, Relics is there to potentially get the reset. There is absolutely no chance for them to be able to stop that, yeah. as right now, Fulcrum is in full control of what's going on in this game. Oh, Pub Whisper gets a nice shot, and he is able to reset cap, but there's still a lot on, uh, on cap. Three oh. people plus plus eight seconds. It's not left. over yet, guys. Pub Whisper needs to land the shots. And there's only one second left, and it's n oh, it's not no. gonna matter. Blue base has been captured. Fulcrum will take battle number four and end up with a three-one series lead. I'll take a break and come back with battle number five. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the desk. Battle number five between Fulcrum Gaming and Simple Tankers will commence on Mines. Now it is a three-one lead full from for Fulcrum Gaming. They only need one more battle. So Simple Tankers, their backs are against the wall because it's now or never. If you want a spot in the finals, it gets potentially simple, wreak havoc. You have to start winning now. Yeah, that last map was really well executed by Fulcrum Gaming. They showed magnificent patience this time around, which really came to uh, honestly win them the game. I mean, there was a really nice flank that was set up anticipating some sort of cap by Simple Tankers. But Fulcrum said, let's position so that we're still okay. We can do a lot of damage against the three tanks that are defending Cap and just wait for those two tanks to flank in. They anticipated that and they took action immediately when it came out. Fulcrum is synchronizing their movements very well at, in addition, you know, they, they've been really been able to pair yeah. off with Hugo and, uh, and Friction or, or, you know, Absolute and Nagatron. Those deadly combinations are working so well for them, and they're staying at, at its core, which is they're very good at their execution on all fronts. Randall, what are some of your thoughts about Fulcrum's play thus far? I'm, I'm really liking what I'm seeing in the fact that 
notice how fulcrum guys will stay together. You'll have guys in pairs, unless there's, for example, someone as a scout, like Absolute Royal in the 1390, he'll be all alone sometimes. But most of the other members of fulcrum are gonna be with a battle buddy. And I think we, we, see, we saw that last match with the IS-3s. Yeah. Spread and out so much damage and almost, yeah. they were just blocking for each other nonstop. Perfect play right there. And that's a huge strength for Fulcrum Gaming, that kind of teamwork that is in completely intentional. And it's just yeah. a great way to play World of Tanks. Just sharing HP, right? Mm -hmm. One for all and all for one, and that's all for number one for Fulcrum Gaming. That's their goal. Let's see if they can finish off Simple Tankers and get one step closer in Battle 5. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mind in the bottom southern corner of the map as the blue team, they are down 1-3. Give a cheer if you want them to come back. It is the Simple Tankers. <laughs> and over in the north side as the red Team. Up 3-1, it is Fulcrum Gaming. And already here, we're actually seeing a huge push from Soviet and Friction into the east side, guys. It looks like Ruth and Carlisle is going to go down, and Friction and Soviet are going all the way into the enemy base. Well, this is a very aggressive strategy. We've seen Fulcrum play very good sets on mine to spread out a lot of crossfire, but instead, Going for two 1390s on the cap immediately and bum rushing Ruth. And now, yeah. Relics did die very quickly on the island. That was a good spot oh. from Simple Tankers, but still, this is going to set up a very awkward situation for both teams. Wow, a lot of shots going out on Mornblade. He was actually uh, being flanked by three different tanks, so this cap wasn't real cap. Oh, on the hill as well. Lots of damage being pushed out. Soviet Friction still trying to cap, but they are also taking shots. Junior is getting surrounded by Hugo and Nagatron, and they did a sandwich him. Can Nagatron maybe finish off Junior here. He's going to be reloaded in just a second. All three of these guys will be reloaded in just a second. And the T32 should come in so they can get a yeah. kill. A lot of them are clipping oh, because they Junior's all tried to kill more blade. Shot. Junior oh, will go down to Royal gets the kill instead. <laughs> oh. And Nagatron down to 65 hit points. Pub Whisper now going to take him out, making sure that he does not clip yet again. Pub Whisper and Mornblade can do a lot of damage here with the consistent fire against these T69. And uh, they, they are, T69s can easily be penetrated by this T32 being able to line up the shot. And Hugo and Absolute yep. sticking together and trying to evacuate from the situation. But Simple Tankers does uh -oh. have the advantage. Absolute Royal. The Cavalry got has tracked. arrived. Zakume in his 1390 is ready to pounce. He was able to take out the two 1390s over on the other side that were capping out. And now we're going to see a lot of damage being done. Every shot matters. Zakume took three oh shots, no! four shots. Good tactic because Zakume went in before Pub Whisper and Mornblade were able to follow through. Mornblade's also in danger of dropping. And Simple Tankers, despite having the advantage, all of a sudden has lost their advantage and now are on the pursuit. Absolute Royal is tracked. He used his repair kit earlier. Pub Whisper needs to finish it off. He will get the reload soon, and he does. Only one member remains for Fulcrum Gaming. Two shots away, though, and one shot is going to go off. Oh, he misses. He misses. He bounced. Oh, oh wow, Hugo needs to get out of there. Pub Whisper lining up the shot. Can he try to get before he returns to the corner? But he isn't. And now it's a game of cat and mouse. Hugo on the reload. Oh, he's got the one shot. He just needs one more. Remember, he has much better alpha. Hugo Maxes needs a total of three shots to be able to kill Pub Whisper. He can't just take his circle. time either, Kretor, because we do have Enderis putting on counter cap pressure. Hugo Maxis trying to use some of his oh. fallen comrades in order to get some cover. Trying to line up a shot on Pub Whisper. Oh, he's not able to land it. And he only has four shots. He needs to make these count. Oh, a very really tense close. moment as now Pub Whisper is now buying time. His priority not is not necessarily killing Hugo Maximus because still a cap is a big victory for Simple Tankers. That's right. Hugo needs to move and it's so uncomfortable for him because as soon as he goes to relieve that cap pressure, he exposes his back to Pub Whisper. So he needs to do this very, very delicately. And now Simple Tankers, might they win two battles in this best of seven <laughs> through caps on Fulcrum?
who have been so good at defending most of it, but in the end have now put put in a situation where Hugo has to come there up. There he is. Pump. There he, he is. see if he can go and cut him off before Hugo Max is getting in position. Pump was trying oh, to go no. big. Hugo has oh. all four shots. And he Pump got some left, does it? Battle five goes to Simple Takers. They still have life in them, and when we come back, we're going to see if they can tie up the series, ladies and gentlemen, the WGL NA Finals. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we introduce the teams in the bottom position as the blue team. Down only two, three now, only one game away from tying up the series. It is Simple Tankers. And if you are a fan of Fulcrum and you want them to close it out, they're up three, two. Give it up for Fulcrum Gaming. And again, looking at the tank lineups, this is to be expected three T69s out for Fulcrum Gaming with two Amex 1390s, no WZ-132s. On the other side, we have much more diversity. Two T69s, a Pershing, a 1390, and a WZ-132. Two light tanks, three medium tanks. Yeah, and you know, it's Nagatron and Soviet on the light tanks for Fulcrum this time around, while we do see the normal suspects for Simple Tankers playing their roles. So Fulcrum kind of rotating a little bit from their conventional tanks. Uh, well, what do you take, what's your take on this opening movements and the tank choices here, Randall? Uh, I like the tank choices out of Simple Tankers. A mix of 69s and one Pershing is a nice uh, consistent fire tank to complement the two T69s and it also brings great gun depression, which is exactly one of the reasons you would bring a T-69. Oh, nice spotting out there in the east. Uh, for Fulcrum, it's a very conventional setup. There's nothing surprising about this full auto loader. They're gonna go for a full engage on a tank or someone cut off if they can, and uh, hopefully not get into a drawn out fight with their opponents with these consistent fire tanks. All right, well, we do see a little bit of movement from uh, simple tankers. People have been complaining recently a little bit about proc because they feel it's become a lot more stagnant in terms of movement. So we do have a, a T1 skirmish. Mornblade will end up falling to friction as Relics did barely manage to escape with his life. A very good sign for Fulcrum now that, now that Relics is barely alive. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the T1s really come into effect this this tournament, honestly, T1s have been the, the big key thing that have been turning the tides of a lot of these games. It happened in game number one, ladies and gentlemen. And over here, we do have a T1 advantage out for Fulcrum Gaming. Now, I want to ask you, is it nearly as important to have that T1 advantage on proc than it is something like a map like Ents, Rukiel? Um, I feel like the T1 advantage comes into play, but there are so many instances where you just shut down the T1 because it's such an open field. And the, distance and, and the distance between the caps is so little and so open that it's, it's very easy to shut down any kind of cap pressure from T1s. They're good for vision, and I feel like you, T1s are okay as in T1 Cunninghams, but the, there's other choices out there. We do see that Tsukume and Junior are lined up here in the A3 position. Trying to see if they can get crossfire friction. Hugo have been lit. Maybe they can get a shot if they're over the, the track, but they're not able to get that. Instead, they will hide their position because they don't want to potentially reveal in case there is any spotters towards the northern part of the map, like the two light tanks here from Fulcrum. Overall, this has been the, the big thing about this map. It's an east-west split because the railroad tracks present a very difficult path to cross, but at the same time, if you try to push too far in, you can pop over and light anybody up that's overextended. I actually like this play coming out from Falcon Gaming. They're playing it very patiently yet again. And remember, if they tie out here, all of a sudden, the last and final battle, they can actually tie and still win the overall series. It goes to seven maps, and they have a better score, three, two, and two draws. So it's definitely a win for Falcon Gaming. It just gives them more options as they go into the next game, and they know. Oh, wow, actually, nice Ooh. shots coming out Hugo from Ruth and Carlo. Pretty Hubbles significant there. damage. Whoa. Has to be, get out of there because he is very weak. Only 363. And a bad roll for him could mean lights out for battle six. So he will have to rotate. Friction going to move a little bit farther forward. 
And overall, a good job because Simple Tankers has only lost a T1 and hasn't taken damage since. An excellent start for Simple Tankers. Right in, do you think that's enough hit, enough hit points for uh, for them to just swing in and start an engagement? Oh, you still have to be very careful because you don't know where you can get crossfired from. It's very easy to lose your advantage, but this is a good starting here as Jay Smooth is going to be the one leading the charge, and Pershings can get some pretty nice bounces if you're not careful. Definitely Along with so. that, he can uh, harass a little easier than these T69s. The T69s can't afford to waste shells, whereas as the Pershing J Smooth will be able to waste a few shells here and there, and it won't Ooh, mean as much friction. Oh, he will take a big hit, though. Has to be very cautious. He was at 1100, but now at 854. Takes another big shot. Pub Whisper wants to press in. Friction has to get out of there. Where are his support? He will drop. Pub Whisper will finish him off. And now Simple Tankers has momentum on their side. Junior oh. able to take out f rex but Soviet managing to get a big money shot on J Smooth. Ooh, and you can see Nagatron and Soviet playing together yet again, sharing that hit points. Pub Whisper is able to get a lot of shots out Ooh, on Nagatron. Nagatron is down very to 200 weak. hit points, and that makes it really open. Junior coming in with the WZ-132. Oh, he wants it. One shot away. Soviet, you oh, have to do something gosh. to save him. And no, he's not able to. Hugo Maximus is going to steal the kill on Junior. Wow, so close. But down goes Nagatron. Soviet just one shot away. Absolute Royal now being shot by Ruth Vin Carlisle. It's really close. Good job there as Ruthven's able to finish off Nagatron. Absolute Royal is going to get swamped. Oh. 25 to 16. He's Absolute clipping. needs to get out of there. He's he has clipping. no ammo. And, and he's, he's going to get damage out. Pub Whisper tries to even corner him. More damage. If you can like Hugo trying to support his teammate from above and putting shots on Ruthven. Both teams have to be very cautious. They don't have much hit points to play with as Ruthven Ooh. does drop. But that does mean Hugo Maximus doesn't have many bolts left. Oh, Pub Whisper did. Bounce one of the shots, but down another this might be eight. it. Yep. Zakume Absolutely. coming on in. And does he have any more shots of T69? He Absolutely should. Absolutely Royals clipping. He's clipping. He, he doesn't have any more. more. Left. Zakume has to go for it. You came at the right time this game, Zakume. You know what you have to do. Pub Whisper doesn't have much time left. Oh, Absolute takes Pub Whisper shot. is done. One more shot, and they're going to take it. Oh, Tying oh, up the series. Simple Tigers takes it on Pro. Can you believe it? We'll be right back with the last battle of his best seven series. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to WGLNA Finals. We are here in match number one, the round of four. Fulgrim Gaming, three and three against Simple Tankers. This is such an exciting series. Can you guys believe how much pressure must be back on Fulcrum after they had 3-1 comfortable lead, and now it's all or nothing. Battle number seven. Randall, give me some of your thoughts about what happened in battle six and this overall dynamic of the series. I don't think either team wanted to have that engagement. It just happened upon both teams, and they did the best that they could. And you saw Simple Tankers come out on top with some very clean moves, some little things here and there. Proper tanking just got just got it won. And a good face hug at the end with the T69s fighting. That was, that was probably the one moment that saved Simple Tankers in that match and got them the victory they needed. Well, they came through in the clutch once again, but can they do it again? It's Battle 7. Winner takes all <laughs> between Fulcrum and Simple Tankers. Let's Ladies pony up one more time. You guys have been a great crowd thus far in the south side of Abbey, the blue team. Give it up for Simple Takers. <laughs> and in the north, the red team, they are a little bit nervous, but they can definitely do it. Give it up for Fulcrum Gaming. Oh, and they're going to have a big confrontation over on the east side. Junior down to 105 hit points. He's going to have to run away, but Soviet is going to give Chase oh. a really unfortunate early lead or early disadvantage for uh, Simple, Simple Tankers. Yeah, Junior getting really pushed in here, and I don't think they were expecting this because how many teams usually try to go for the east side? Hugo trying to wrap around, but that's Nagatron's job. Hugo wants to finish it off. He is baiting out a lot of fires, and Hugo will end up getting the last shot, wow. and that is a big deficit for Simple Tankers, as right now they will have to kind of call an audible 
and completely rotate around Fulcrum. That is the shots that they, or that is the lead that they were looking for. And now they can slow play the rest of this game to what they are normally used to. Definitely so. I mean, this is a gigantic blunder right away, Junior. Not being in perfect position, not having the right scout run, defending against an east side push. And that seems kind of reasonable at the same time because we've always seen Fulcrum Gaming going over to the west side, not really favoring this east side push. So it seemed theoretically correct for the majority of times, but here we go. Negatron is going to be chased out in his 1390. It's going to be very difficult to catch him, but Pup Whisper in that 5100 definitely going to offer a lot of damage. And yeah, Negatron going to scurry away, and now he has spotted three members of Simple Tankers who has rotated towards the Abbey. Now, you, see, you can clearly see on the main map, Fulcrum is taking a very defensive position, spread all over the place. Randall, give me some of your thoughts about how Fulcrum's handling this. Oh. I, think, I think Fulcrum is just metagamed against uh, Simple Tankers. They, I, I, I think we saw Simple Tankers do something similar to this on Abbey before. Uh oh, uh oh, Jay Smooth! Oh no, Nagatron able to finish off Jay Smooth, and Darius now oh, caught no, in the and open. Now Darius goes down oh my goodness three tier eight tanks already finished up the co the the curtains are closing out for simple tankers after a fantastic run and what started off as such a great comeback now fulcrum has been able to execute brilliantly this is what almost every team is afraid of and now Fulcrum able to implement what you were talking about in, the, in day number one Andre how Fulcrum they usually play standard conventional but they are able to implement their own mind games into this best of seven and adapting to their opponents Pub Whisper taking uh, a shot from Nagatron but any trade favors Fulcrum even if Nagatron is taking the disadvantage if he takes two shots for one that's still good for Fulcrum yeah it's it's just such a, a difficult situation for simple tankers and and you said it perfectly, you know? This whole time, Fulcrum was, wasn't really pushed. Finally, for the first time over here in the round of four, Simple Tankers will do that, but you can see that Fulcrum Gaming just has here. so much experience. Ruth and Carlisle, the last T8 tank to be alive. The confidence here from Fulcrum is absolutely stagnating because there's nothing that Simple Tankers can do as Nagatron goes for the snapshot around his opponent. Ruth and Carlisle, the last one to fall. Four simple tankers of the tier eights, which means the Kume and Morn are going to try and camp, but I don't, or actually, no, that's the opposite direction. <laughs> the Kume and Morn, but they try and defend, but there's really nothing much that they can do because they are only two tier ones, and all seven members of Fulcrum are alive. And this is just the brilliance of Fulcrum Gaming from start to finish. They deserve to be in the finals, and they will go to the finals as the closing moments of this series is about to commence. Oh, really unfortunate. Can't even get that one last kill. Not a single tank has dropped so far. I think F0X That is it. it. Fulcrum Gaming advances to the finals, playing a brilliant game seven against Simple Tankers. The big favorite, Simple Tankers, still gave them a run for the money, but Fulcrum Gaming yet again showing why they deserve to be in the finals. You know, you can say a lot about some of the series or some of the games, but Fulcrum Gaming showed in this last and final game on Abbey that they are ready, they are willing to take first place. Absolutely exhilarating series. Get up once again for Simple Tankers. Put on an amazing show, finished four in three in the group stages, had to go through a lot in the playoffs just to make it out here. And they, man, they surprised the hell out of everybody with their brilliant execution and on top of that, their great strategies. You know, they're not done just yet either because they will be playing in the third and fourth place match because there is a prize difference in that regard. So we're not, it's not the last we see of Simple Tankers for today. But we'll, ha we'll find out who their opponents are coming up in just a second. Let's take the moment and break down uh, what we just saw. Randall, what's your overall feeling from the series? Give out some MVP awards for Fulcrum Gaming. Fulcrum Gaming did a fantastic job the entire time. I felt like we saw every single member come into play. Relics did a, uh, regrettably, I have to say, Relics did a good job in the T1. And uh, <laughs> he's looking at me now. I can't. Um, are you getting hot and bothered, Randall? Yeah, he, he actually did a decent job. Uh, we have to regret to say that. It's Fulcrum did a great job metagaming their opponents and just playing incredibly strong. Simple Tankers played very well. Uh, they surprised me. They impressed me. I feel like next season we're going to see a very strong Simple Tankers. And Fulcrum Gaming, is, it looks like they're, they've gone through a very tough series here. And I think, 
that that might prepare them for their next fight. I think so too, and they will be playing the winner of Simp versus Wreak Havoc. Now, I am really excited for that match because I think it's going to be tightly contested. Oh, both yeah. of those teams have lots. And when they're both playing at their best, they, they both look at some of the best teams in the league. I don't know what to really expect, but either way, they're still going to have to go up against Fulcrum, who, again, I have to just commend them for being able to withstand a lot of the pressure because Simple Tankers kept throwing weird strategy after weird strategy, really trying to catch them off guard. And enough with that. Fulcrum said, well, why don't we throw something different in game number seven on Abby, which yeah. would end up being in their favor dra dramatically. Momentum's a real thing, and Simple Tankers had a lot of it going into it. I loved how they constantly mind game their opponents, really tried to, to put Fulcrum in tough positions and to react quickly. And as I was saying before, this is when you get a lot of mistakes. This is when you force a lot of mistakes. And it was just so beautiful. What a fantastic series for the first round of four match. We have Clutch right behind me that, uh, that's ready. And what's going on, Clutch? Thank you, gentlemen. Fulcrum Gaming, that was an incredible series that you had against Simple Tankers. Some were surprised that it became tied 3-3 later in that match. What happened? What went wrong? Were you guys tilted? Walk us through the wins and the losses. Uh, it's definitely a combination of a couple different things. First off, they're a fantastic team. Throughout the season, they had some roster changes and whatnot, so their record did not reflect how good they are. They definitely would have been number two, if not number one, in our side of the bracket. Uh, on top of that, we made it just a lot of little minor mistakes, which is basically what it boils down to with good teams. You know, whoever messed up the most usually loses, because if everybody plays perfect, it, I don't even know how that works out. How do you, what do you think? I agree. Uh, Junior is a great leader of that team. Simple Tankers are just going to keep getting better. I think we'll see them in season two up there, way up there. Well, there's no doubt they perform very, very well, and, and the amount of energy going through the crowd for yeah. both the teams and to see the different skirmishes and things that were going right, and many times we were on the edge of our seat. Now you guys have made it to the finals, all right? Some say you're the number one pick. Who would you rather face in the finals, wreak havoc or simp? We would rather face no stars. <laughs> the no star team? I'll take that as an answer. Uh, for me, I, I'd have to say they're both great teams, especially if, if Wreak Havoc shows up uh, with their game face on. But I'd have to say that's undecided yet. Whoever plays the most aggressive, whoever earns their spot, I think is who we want to play. Because we want the finals to be good. Better than this, which is going to be hard to do. Well, it has been really exciting so far. Finally, gentlemen, with the amount of pressure you've had coming into this season one finals, with the amount of experience that you've had, but also the amount of fans that you've had, you have a lot to live up to, but what would you like to say to all your supporters so far that has helped Fulcrum Gaming become one of the most successful teams? Uh, first of all, спасибо всем из России, кто смотрит нас. Thanks a lot to all the Russian viewers and uh, followers of our team. Really appreciate it. And of course, everybody on Twitter, Facebook, and all our social media, those who watch us on the streams, I really, really enjoy the support. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll keep growing with you guys. On top of that, I, I have to add, uh, thanks to all the other teams, especially the ones who have been putting in a lot of effort, you know, getting themselves out there and really trying to help this make a league, because we all have to do it together. Uh, it's not just, you know, the top team or whoever's got the most followers, it takes everybody. And, of course, you guys. It was fantastic production so far. Well, thank you, sir. It's our job to tell you guys a story, but the story is not over yet for Fulcrum Gaming or for any of these teams. But speaking of social media, make sure to follow us on Twitter at WGLNA. And also, we're going to be giving away some gold codes to our online viewers. And for everyone here in Las Vegas, we have some raffle tickets. We're going to be giving away one of those Alienware X51 computers. So make sure to stick around. The longer you stay, the more raffle tickets you get. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. We come back the next match in the semifinals. Stay tuned.